The Minnesota Fighting Vikings had one of the worst, the worst defensive lines in the National Football League last year, but they are back with a vengeance, man. They're getting after it. Vikings, we have the meats. That is right. So we're going to take a look at who's going to make the 53-man rooster, who's going to make the practice squad, and who's going to be straight up cut. So generally on a, a 53-man roster, you keep 10 defensive linemen. Now, Maybe they'll stretch it out and go 11, but I don't know. The Vikings will, are pretty deep at every other position, and it is going to be a numbers game. There's going to be some very talented players that get cut. So let's go through the list. Uh, of course, you got Daniil, Wanham, Weatherly. So on this list, we have uh, free agents in yellow. We have rookies in blue. Now your pants are blue. Name that movie. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so uh, rookies and UDFAs in blue. Uh, and so we're going to pick through. All right. So let's talk about who is going to absolutely make it. Daniel Hunter. I think it's pretty safe to say that he's going to make the rooster. Uh, DJ Wanham. I think that he's going to make it. Steve Weatherly. There is a world where Steve Weatherly might not make the roster, but I think it's extremely unlikely. Uh, uh, unlikely. Andre Patterson and Mike Zimmer love him. Uh, there it isn't. His one-year, $2.5 million deal, like there is some guaranteed money, but it isn't fully guaranteed. Uh, and maybe there's a world where Patrick Jones or Janaris Robinson just blow the doors off the roof or something insane like that. But no, I think Wedley is going to make it here. So now we're going to have to fudge a little bit. Like maybe they carry six edge rushers, especially since uh, Steve Wedley can play inside. I don't know. Uh, and then let's go through the rest. So Pierce and Tomlinson are obviously going to make it. Sheldon is going to make it, yes. And the rest is really up in the air. So now we can pick through. So basically, all of these guys are going for four spots. Now, Patrick Jones is second, Janaris Robinson are third and fourth round picks, respectively. I think it's extremely unlikely that both of them, or uh, I think it's unlikely that one of them does not make the 53. I think they're both pretty safe because maybe the Vikings would try to get cute and get them onto the practice squad, except... I think they'll get snapped up. And, and remember, it is expanded practice squads uh, just like in 2020. So 16 players on the PS. So you do like that. But I think as of right now, Jones and Robinson are pretty safe. So now, now we're going for two spots. And, and you look who's left. Jalen Holmes, who is in the final year of his rookie deal. And the Vikings seem to like him. I think he had a golden opportunity last year and didn't really take advantage of it. But do the Vikings give credence to his veteran presence over young guys? I don't know. Kenny Wolk gets the seventh round pick last year out of Michigan State. Was highly productive in East Lansing. Was hurt last year and spent time on the IR. I think that he could surprise for sure. And all these young guys will certainly benefit from a full training camp as well as actual preseason games this year. Uh, Jordan Brailford, who I like last year. They picked him up midseason. Uh, I believe he was a seventh round pick by Washington out of Oklahoma State. Speed rusher guy. Uh, had himself a couple of nice pressures. Actually... If you remove snap minimums, I think Jordan Brailford is the highest graded PFF edge rusher in the National Football League. It's pretty awesome. Uh, Zenday Johnson from Cal can play uh, inside and outside. And then you have Armand for Watts, who I think is probably going to be pretty safe. Uh, I think that he will be that third nose tackle. Uh, he does have, he's sort of like Diesel Dalvin, where he has nose tackle and three tack uh, flexibility coming into year three out of Arkansas. Uh, again, all these guys around the team last year had a massive opportunity last year to step up, and not everyone did, right? Uh, Jordan Scott, the UDFA from Oregon, who they like, but we'll see. Uh, Hercules Mondafa, James Lynch. One of these guys is not going to make the roster, which is kind of insane, right? Uh, because Herc, given opportunity last year, actually got after the quarterback, played inside, played a little bit of edge rusher as well, and James Lynch, free James Lynch. Like Every time that he got on the field, something good happened, but um, they just didn't put him on the field very often. I, I don't know what's going on, but I think they are pretty, uh, you know, pretty big uh, practice squad candidates. And Jalen Twyman, I mean, people forget Jalen Twyman got shot four times like a couple weeks ago. Uh, but uh, his agent says that he should be good to go uh, for Cam. Maybe he's able to go on the the NFI list or maybe on the pup list. So actually, let's create that and the NFI or really good spelling today. NFI or pup. Because, I mean, it would be a great story if he's able to come into camp right away. But, you know. All right, so Jalen Twyman is there. Now, what do we do? What do we do? So, you are pretty solid one through four defensive tackle. Well, one through three for sure. You got Pierce Tomlinson and Sheldon. Armand could be that fourth guy, yes. Do you put James Lynch in there? Do you put Hercules in there? Who would be most susceptible for being plucked uh, uh, off of waivers if you try to get him on the practice squad. I'd probably say Lynch, uh, given that he his youth. So you could put 
could put Lynch on the 53. Now, Hercules was waived last year, got on the practice squad, and then sort of vacillated back and forth. So he could put Herc on the practice squad again. Uh, Jalen Holmes. <sighs> It'd be tough to see Jalen Holmes on the practice squad since you do generally like to practice squad guys that are young, that have potential. I think Jalen Holmes sort of tapped out. So if he doesn't make the 53, like if Andre Patterson or Zimmer don't put their foot down and be like, hey, Jalen Holmes has to make the, this roster, I think he'll just be cut. So we'll put him there. Kenny Willekes, I think, will make the practice squad. Then you put Brailford. Eh, I like Brailford. I don't know if he'll get the opportunity. Uh, but in terms of drafting Patrick Jones and Janaris in the third and fourth rounds back-to-back, I mean, Brailford was one of the guys that really you know bricked out. But that's fine. Uh, Jordan, do you want a backup nose tackle? Do we need that? Yeah, sure, why not? I'll put Jordan Scott on the practice squad. So that would mean Brailford and Zade Johnson are, are out of luck. Now, I, I just um, you guesstimated you know, three players on the 16-man practice squad from the defensive line. That does make sense. Now, you, you could do what teams have continually done when it was 10 and 12 player practice squads where you cut a player, you bring them back and you sort of cycle through. Basically you create an extra practice squad spot. So maybe they do that with a guy like Brailford or Zaday Johnson. I don't really know, but yeah, I, I again, a lot of really good players are not going to make this roster. Cause I mean, just going through this exercise, you got Hercules not making the team yet. You, you got Kenny Willekes on the practice squad. And this is what Twyman on the NFI. Now, if Twyman doesn't um, it, it don't go uh, doesn't go down this route, then you're looking at cutting a guy like Jordan Scott or maybe even Kenny Willekes or having to carry uh, four defensive linemen on the 16 and a practice squad. So 25% of your PS, yeah, probably not. But I mean, you just look how stacked this is. I mean, you just how deep edge rusher is. Daniel Wanham, Weatherly, Patrick Jones second, Janaris Robinson. I think you can write that ticket that at least five of them are going to be kept, and then. Pierce Tomlinson Richardson. I mean, that is deep, man. I don't think it's playable, but it, it is going to be great because the Vikings defensive line, we got the meats. That's right. Stop the run, get to third and long, pin those ears back, get exotic and erotic, and get after that quarterback, baby, making everyone's job easier. I like it. I love it, man. Uh, but your thoughts and our thoughts. Take a look at the Vikings defensive line this year. Uh, let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most part, that work. Pull some of the Venmo, but until next time, Skull Production Value.